Good morning, Las Vegas. It's Sandra Pollard with It's Where I Am. Today, my guests are Ogeshi Musa and Alexandria Brown. I also have Kip Rolf, who is uh, from Coast to Coast Coffee, who's here. He'll be chiming in a little bit later. But first, we're going to start with Ogeshi. Ogeshi is a film writer, director, actor, producer. Uh, she has a film coming out. I believe it's next week. It's called Friction. Ogeshi, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for that very warm welcome. Thank glad you. to be here on the show. Awesome. Glad you're here. I know that you have been um, writing most of your life. Uh, it wasn't your first path or the first direction. Um, you were telling me that you are Nigerian descent and... You were supposed to be a doctor. How did you become a filmmaker? And then tell us about some of the films that you've done. Yes, yes. I was the doctor of the family. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a path that I'm very proud of because for so long I lived a path that wasn't mine. I was, I was living up to this image that I didn't paint of myself. And a lot of people added to that image. You know, it started from birth with my parents because we had great expectations of just receiving the highest education because that's really what they did. You know, that's how they got there. They struggled so hard to pave this path for us as Nigerian immigrants that it really felt as if um, we had to. <laughs> just because right. it's like, uh, yeah, you, you did that. They did that. They took that journey and we're here and let's let's be on this path. And at some point, I really did want to um, become a doctor. Like I, I really that was a part of um, my ambition. You know, it was to help people. It was to help people. And I love science. I love I was very curious. Um, but I, I always wrote as a child. I was very quiet. And I always turned to writing to really express my feelings and to express really everything. I didn't talk much as a child. I, I want to reiterate as a child. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I really found my voice through writing. Yes. And I, I started getting encouragement in high school. I was encouraged to potentially have a career as a playwright. Uh, playwriter. So okay. that that was a path I almost completely went on. I did a couple of plays in college that um, were in festivals and this and that. But it's, it was truly being on set and rewriting um, a scene I was acting in that kind of gave me this opportunity to meet people to encourage me. I was on set in Boston, um, theory of conflict with Ramon and uh, the DP was Darren Cole. And I met them, once I met them, that was my filmmaker family. It, that's It's history from there because they really just encouraged me to continue on that path. And I loved it. I completely loved it. I was living a life without restrictions uh, because it was, it was really what I wanted to do in that moment. I was not in school and I just had that time to fall into and grow into myself and really just continue to use writing as that that way of just expressing everything I'm feeling. Um, and my first film uh, is Friction, which is, is now really being uh, distributed and formulated as a a very good story to tell right now, anytime, anytime in America, this story can be told. It's about a community that is divided between nonviolent and violent approaches to change. And okay. the specific change that they're trying to you know, accomplish is police um, reform and more so really combating police brutality because a lot of people have different ideas of what reform looks like. Sure. So that is what the whole community is really um, kind of trying to live through. So that film, that one is going to be in February. Definitely shout out in February. Okay. Um, look, yeah, February will be will be the month where that when that's released, and it's just gained uh, distribution and representation, and we're all looking towards February. So I got you first on "It's Where I Am." Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. So let the people know uh, so that they can find your film. Uh, give them your uh, contact information or your production company so that they can follow you and find out about the movie Friction. Most definitely. So we have a, a film website, frictionmovie.com. Okay. And that's, you know, F-R-I-C-T-I-O-N. <laughs> 
frictionmovie.com. That's definitely going to be the most direct way. Um, and I have a few other websites. I have my company website as well as my personal website, ogechimusa.com. Um, I think that that is a, a good way to really find everything because I have all the links there. Okay. Um, and then, of course, my production company. So you'll see all the different films that I've um, worked on and I'm, I've been a part of since Friction. And that's m 5 productionscom So m 5 productionscom okay. And then if you just want to look up my name, ogechimusa.com, that works as well. It's a rare name. I'm I'm from um, two very different tribes in Nigeria. And okay. it's... Uh, it's it's you're gonna find me <laughs> but yeah if you go to the movie page if you go to my company page you'll see the other films that i'm working on mm-hmm. i'm a conscious storyteller yes you are yeah oh <laughs> thank you and uh those films will definitely you'll see if you look at the trailers i'm having films about homeless people i'm having films um raising awareness to mental health i'm having films raising awareness to gentrification in cleveland through a documentary mm-hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna cut the the combo short because I know I could go I could keep going no no you're doing fine I but you you forgot about mist mit, excuse me midst yes yes m-i-d-s-t mm-hmm. mist was a short film and that was that's my lgbtqia film that I did in Boston in tangent with uh film and friction and just it just really speaks to and that film was great because it's I was writing that right during friction as well. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I'm in two productions right now too. So I really, I'm just doing it. Um, and that film, that short film, it was a um, senior thesis for Darren Cole in at Mass Art. And it really formulated into this project where I could use my voice um, just kind of expressing the, the restrictions that I've always felt about my sexuality as well. So it was really just all these works. I'm, I'm trying to have a platform for the marginalized communities so that they can have a voice because for so long I didn't have a voice and for so long I didn't see representation. So I'm like, this is what I can do. I can use my power. I can use my talent. I can use everything that um, I have within for others in this way. So that's that's my whole sh- <laughs> spiel. <laughs> well, you know what? That's what I love. I love having uh, filmmakers and writers on the show because, you know, writing is such a cathartic therapeutic process and we keep so much some of us bottled up inside and we need to release it in some way you know we may not want to talk to someone about it right away we may want to kind of formulate and gather our thoughts and our feelings by or through writing and so I really can appreciate uh, people with talent such as yours thank you thank you so much yes yes and so you have these wonderful films that talk about homelessness, as you mentioned, in the Boston area, I believe. And then, go go ahead. A uh, homelessness in LA. Oh, in LA. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I, all, I'm all over. I filmed in um, Boston and then LA, Cleveland as well. So okay. I in New York, I did as well. So I I'm kind of like filming all over the country, but I I'm based in LA now. Okay, that's the hometown. Yeah, that's Kip talking <laughs> over there. Yeah, we're from California. We're from the L.A. area. So, and it's such a, you know, a difficult situation with the homelessness there and here in, in Las Vegas. And so, with that being said, I'd like to bring in our community leader, Alexandria Brown, who was the CEO of CHIPS, which is the Community Health. I'm pulling my paper out. Community Health. Help me out, Alexandria. Community Health Improvement Program. There we go. That's CHIPS. (laughs) Thanks, Zandra. Such an awesome program. Tell us about it. How can you help the people? Sure. Um, So we have a number of programs. Uh, We essentially help those who access emergency services. Our, Our goal is to realign them with services that more accurately meet their needs. A lot of times people reach out to 911 or go to the emergency department because that's really um, the only place that they can go at any time to get access to services that we need, they need. Um, So we like to uh, create programs, innovative programs around social determinants to health that arrive in our community or that exist in our community, excuse me. Um, So our three top client type that we deal with are um, those who are experiencing homelessness, those with behavioral health disorders who are in crisis, um, and then older adults who are aging in place. 
Um, so for those experiencing crisis, we actually provide a clinician, a licensed clinical social worker who rides on an ambulance and can go out to calls that come through the 911 center as psychiatric in nature. Um, our local police department, Metro, Metro Police Department, um, they can also request this unit uh, when they encounter someone that's having um, a psychiatric emergency. Okay. That way a clinician is on scene to help with that intervention. Um, they can start to build a rapport right there in the midst of crisis so that we can help them on the back end and also just be a support to our first responders um, who are not mental health professionals, right? Um, so sending that mental health professional out to help them um, assist with that client in the moment. And then as we try to connect them with services on the back end, uh, we've already kind of uh, built that relationship and start to build that rapport so that they trust us a little bit more to be able to help them with services on the back end. Um, so that's what we're currently doing uh, for individuals experiencing crisis. Uh, for those who are experiencing homeless or at risk of, at risk of homelessness, uh, we have some programming that uh, still in the works that we're working on to do transitional and permanent supportive housing. Okay. Um, we're hoping that that fully launches here um, in the next few months. Uh, we'll have updates on our websites and social media um, once those fully launch. Um, and then our last demographic is older adults aging in place. Um, a lot of people come to Las Vegas to retire um, and their children a lot of times live in other places. And so they get to a point in age where they're not able to care for themselves in the same manner they were before. And then they tend to rely on be it um, EMTs or firefighters to kind of come out and help them do certain stuff that they're not able to do on their own. Um, so we'll do needs assessments and then try to connect them with community opportunities so that they can maintain their independence at home, but have the support systems um, around them so that they can live at home safely. So I have a question. Are families able to contact you so that they can get, like if there's an emergency situation and, you know, someone needs to call the police department or have an ambulance to come, can they call CHIPS directly if you're open or they're after hour? Uh, is there an after hours phone number? Um, sure. So um, in the case of an emergency, we're always going to have them call 911, right? So sure. that uh, first responders can respond. But then can they call you? But yes, so if we have family members or community members who are just looking for some resources, um, kind of trying to figure things out, they can contact us. We have a resource center that is located uh, downtown. Okay. Um, it's at 145 North Bruce. Um, that is a walk-in center. I believe right now it's open from nine to four, Monday through Friday. Um, and then they can help connect uh, just the at-large community with some resources as well. Okay, so just to be clear, Say Grandpa Joe is acting a little funny and he's already um, been in a, a mental health facility and we run into a 911 situation with him where he's hit uh, somebody and is acting erratic. We would call 911 and then we can call chips between nine and four if it happens between those hours. So great question thank you um, for that clarity so no we don't currently have like another um, team that dispatches in um in those type of situations we currently only respond to 911 calls but if after the event happens the family determines you know uncle joe or grandpa joe can really um utilize some outpatient services or treatment and we're not really sure where to go then they could call that, call us for that, and then we could assist with directing them um, to some possible treatments for them. You know, you know, Alexandra, I've had this question, and so that's why I'm just trying to make sure it's very clear for the people because I've been asked this a couple of times. Oh my God, my stomach's growling. Sorry. So, no breakfast this morning. Anyhow, um, I've been asked about how do we get the mental health professional on the ride. It's just random. There's no request for it other than the police requesting you. Correct. So currently okay. um, there is no way to request us. Um, civilians or the community at large is not allowed to request that unit. Okay. Um, the unit just finished its pilot phase um, in a very specific region. We're looking at expansion um, and going to other areas in the valley um, or throughout the Las Vegas Valley. 
um, but it is currently you can't request the unit or you can't request someone comes out uh, from the community at large. Uh, we just don't have enough units or the manpower to be able to handle that. So we have to be very strategic um, about where we're able to send that unit. So are you going to be working with more than one hospital? Because you were on my show, uh, my second show, first show ever on YouTube. You can find it at uh, itswhereiam.com. You and uh, Fire Chief Stevenson were talking about this program and that the pilot was being done with Desert Parkway Hospital. Correct. So your expansion, does that mean uh, in different areas or does it mean another hospital has gotten involved? So both. Awesome. Our, we've already expanded our area to... Um, it won't make a lot of sense to the community if I say this, but our community is split up, split up into kind of battalions and regions for the fire department. So we've already expanded out to another battalion or region without within the fire department. Okay. Um, we have three hospitals, two to three hospitals right now that we are still working on MOUs. We don't have our MOU solidified yet, so I won't um, say what those hospitals are. Okay. Uh, but we are looking uh, to add two, at least two more hospitals um, who will be partnering with us in this. Beautiful. That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show, Alexandria. Um, thank you for having me. Please, please give your uh, social media handles for our listeners and they can also find it on itswhereiam.com please make sure you go through the website and check out the many different resources that are there but alexandria can you please let them know yes so you can find us on facebook um smb uh i'm sorry southern nevada chips on facebook um kind of just check in and see what we've been up to um i didn't mention this but we've also been giving out uh distributing some of the clark county CARES dollars for housing assistance. Um, so we've been able to help a number of people in our community um, maintain their residents, not become homeless uh, by paying their rents for them and some utilities. So you can check us out on Facebook, get more information there. Um, if you're interested, uh, we are 501c3. If you're interested in supporting, please feel free to click the donate button. Uh, we won't be mad at you for that. Um, okay. Our website is www.snbchips.org. And then you can find us on Instagram, snb.chips. And so for the people who need rental assistance, how does that work? Is there an application process? How long does it take? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that need it. Yes, definitely. So uh, for us particularly, our applications are closed. We took our last application um, December 30th. Okay. However, Clark County has extended um, their uh, portion of it. So you can go, um, I don't have the website with me offhand, but it's CHAP, so not CHIPS, but CHAP, C-H-A-P with okay. Clark County. Um, if you Google that, you should be able to find the link to apply for rental assistance if you've been financially impacted by COVID-19. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for providing those resources on the show. And I thank you for coming back on and being available to talk to the people. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm going to come back over to you, Ogeshi, before we let you go. Because uh, we got to talk about some coffee. Yeah. Um, Ogeshi, are you still with me? Yes, yes, I'm oh, here. Yeah. Okay. So you were telling us about you have four or five films that you've worked on so far, but you have Friction coming out to be released in February. Yes. Is there anything else you want to let the people know before I let you go on with your day? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, I just actually, that's, I'm glad that you came back to me because I wanted to follow up. We are on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, for Friction, it's at Friction Movie. So everything for Friction is FrictionMovie.com and then at Friction Movie. And then if you also go to at M5 Productions Inc., that'll be my production company. Um, and then my, at, my handle is at Getch At Me. G E C H A T M E. So you'll see all of that on Instagram and then on Facebook as well, Friction Movie, um, and then Ogechi Musa. So that's another way to continue to follow my story. Um, I have a lot of things up and coming, and I'm just really excited for what's to come. Just because I really feel as if the work that we're doing is really, it's it's a matter of evoking empathy. It's a matter of someone seeing a perspective that they would never encounter. 
in their everyday life. Seeing that and connecting with that, having that commonality, and really that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to have you find something in common from someone you would never ever see because that's how we're combating everything occurring right now in the society, especially relating to systemic racism. Because if you don't know, you're uncomfortable, you're unfamiliar, you're just gonna assume, you're gonna fall into this, this mindset that's someone else's. So I think that's really the whole, if I had to say a last line, that's really it. So it's, it's that kind of work. Um, and I'm, I'm really open to collaboration as well. And I'm really trying to network and just like continue to build my tribe out here in LA. So just contact to vibe as well. Like that's what we need to. Well, you know, I, I think you want a few, you want a few awards, right? You want a few awards for this already before it's this uh, next release date. Yes, correct. Um, it definitely, so out here in LA, LA Cinema, uh, it won Best Film. Awesome. Um, so that's, someone told me that's like Best Director, so that was kind of cool. And I had um, a couple of, I think it was, Aust- um, let's see here, Australia International Film Festival, I got Best Actress. I, oh, wow. I acted in it as well. Okay. Um, I wore a lot of hats with this film just because at many points, it was going to stop. It was going to, and we all know this as filmmakers, like, if it's off the shelf and it's on the screen, that's like, that's main goals. So there's a lot of obstacles and so many obstacles came in place. Um, but it really was when Tra- when Trayvon Martin, um, when George Zimmerman got let loose, like there's so many moments that just kept it going. You know, and, and it, I was like, okay, I'll put this hat on. All right, I'm gonna put this hat on because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this just drop. So there was a lot of passion in it, and I've, I've received a couple awards in festivals, um, and that those were the main two because it was best. Um, I think there was one other one. I got pre-selected for a lot as well. So there's a, a lot of laurels, um, and I think those main two were the ones that. I was just very, very extremely proud of just because it really reflected all that hard work um, because I just couldn't, I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let it go because I knew this message. um, It's going to speak to a lot of people. But, you know, when you mentioned wearing all of these hats, as I'm so familiar with, you know, how is it like the writing, it helps. But then are you talking to anyone? Do you have a therapist yourself? That's, that's a great question. Um, yes, yes, I do. I actually need to schedule <laughs> another session soon, the New Year session. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't always, um, that's for sure. I know that when I was kind of balancing all of this, I hadn't one, you know, I didn't have one. So um, in a way, my art is my therapy that that lasted for oh so long. But but then again, there were so many pressures and um, so much, so much work and so much expectations within myself, you know, just because of the way I was raised, work ethic, you're, you know, if I'm going to go on this path, I better be going in. I better be the next spike, you know, <laughs> like, right, right. I, I got to bring it. Right. So there was there was all of that that I also just kind of um, kept within you know, I, I really suppressed a lot. And when, when you have that, there's just like emotional um, discharge in weird ways. You know, it, it doesn't, you, you don't process and that builds up. And that, of course, that, that definitely affected my mental health. And this work in itself, it's changed me. Like doing the research for friction, I've, I've definitely really come, I, I've woken up to a lot of things and that completely changes your pr- perspective on your past experiences and current ones so i'm i'm constantly balancing mental health that's for sure yeah but therapy definitely helped just um past two years or maybe even yeah 2019 past two years i've been um on and off with therapists but pretty consistent for 2020 um and then gonna start up again soon just because i think that it's it's a beautiful resource it's a beautiful resource it's absolutely helped, um, yeah a lot of stigmas you know i i definitely had those you know i was restricting myself um, due to these stigmas. So living without restrictions is an everyday challenge and accomplishment that I, I hope to achieve and continue to. Yes, thank you so much for those words. Um, and that's why It's Where I Am is here to let you know it's okay. Let me bring in my next guest, Mr. Kip Rolf of Coast to Coast Coffee. Hello. Hello. You know, I need to have my coffee every morning. I'm not going to act right. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) And so why is that? First, they were saying coffee was this terrible drug. Then they said, 
Well, if you drink it black, it has great health benefits. Like it's that's a natural laxative, right? right? That was one of the keep the digestion, right. you know, good and flowing. Um, and also how it works with our brain. You know, I'm a lot happier after two cups. You know, I feel like I had about five drinks, but I'm sober. <laughs> so <laughs> coffee is a great thing. Tell us about your coffee. Where do you get your coffee beans? Get into it. Okay, so um, we're Coast to Coast Roasters. Um, we get our beans from uh, different places. Uh, right now, uh, the bean that we're really uh, pushing hard is uh, Sadamo Ethiopian coffee. Okay. And we are making single serve coffee. So what that means is you can um, put it in a bag. I mean, put it in your cup and okay. then uh, put some hot water over it. And so it's this, right? Yeah, so I yeah. just want to show it on the camera yeah. that you just simply make a hot pot of coffee. Hot, not even hot pot of coffee, just hot water. Just and then a, oh, drop I'm sorry, it I said in. hot coffee. I meant hot water. <laughs> yeah. And then you just drop this in there. Yeah, just drop it in and it's okay. not instant coffee it's real coffee so um real arabica coffee top-notch coffee i'm glad you said that yeah. because i'm not a fan of instant coffee this is some real coffee yes, yes. it's real strong right and so and that's what i like i like it <laughs> dark black and strong exactly my coffee yeah. so <laughs> go on tell us more when did you start doing the coffee what why did you decide coffee well I've been doing coffee, well, I've been doing food and beverage. It's funny that we're sitting in this building right here on UNLV because I went to the food and beverage school here at, at UNLV okay. before I moved back to L.A. Okay. Yeah, so been in and out of doing uh, food and beverage, catering, and then moved to just coffee. Um, I had a coffee stand. Um, I had a, a cafe. And then... While I was doing the cafe, I started roasting coffee. So um, this, this when it got to um, just recently, um, I started to just change over to retail instead of wholesale. Because um, okay. I was just doing wholesale, uh, restaurants, uh, cafes, offices. That was my whole um, target market. Okay. But with um, the COVID coming in, I had to... Um, do retail and doing that online now and that's where I came up with this idea with the single serve um, you know people can still get the coffee and go on be on the go right. put it put it in a, um, a cup like this you know and uh, that you can go can go hiking fishing whatever you know just and so on your website do you have those cups as well the thermos we will we will yeah okay yeah. awesome yeah because yeah. I, you know, I can never keep them. The kids are always taking them. <laughs> and so they're hard to keep in the house. But I love to have a hot coffee. And so I just want to make sure that when I put this in, it has to steep like a tea, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just like a tea. And it okay. takes about five, five to seven minutes and boom, okay. you're there, you know. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, Kip, give us your social media handle so that we can find Coast to Coast Coffee. It's uh, coast to coast roasters, uh, dot com, and it's coast to coast with the two uh, with the two being a number. And um, we're also on uh, Instagram. Uh, it's coast to coast roasters on Instagram and Facebook. And coast to coast is also on my website. It's where I am dot com. You can find Kip Roth's story there. You can find his direct link to his website. And so I want to thank all my guests for being here. Oh, guess she? Are you still there? Just want to yes, say. Yes, I am. I mute myself, so that's why I'm like saying. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I just wanted to thank you again for coming on to the show. I want to give a shout out to Bespoken Media, Miss Nia Simone, uh, for bringing us together. And uh, I want to definitely thank Alexandra Brown of Chips, a community resource, and Kip Roth for his Coast to Coast Coffee. I'm Zandra Pollard. It's where I am. I'll see you all next month in February, second Saturday of the month at 8.30 a.m. It'sWhereIam.com. Bye. <laughs>